Hello again. In this video we are going to continue with the Bachnet Web Services to Node-RED integration. In the previous demonstration I talked about getting values from the Bachnet Web Services when the value changes. This was done by subscribing to a Bachnet property via a mechanism called COV, short for change of value. In this demonstration we will focus on writing values to a Bachnet property. The Tinker device comes with two relays installed on its baseboard. In this demonstration there is nothing connected to those relays, but I can still read whether the relay is on or off, and I can turn it on and off by writing to the Bachnet objects that are associated with the relays. We are going to start by entering Node-RED in the browser. Here we see the work we did with the trend log and calls in the last demonstrations. I have also added everything regarding the relays. So in this demonstration, I will explain all the nodes. But let me first start by showing how the dashboard is organized. We have this tab called Dashboard. Here we can create tabs and groups within the tabs. The charts, gauges and other dashboard elements are then connected to, to these groups. So regarding the relays, the first thing we want to do is to get the state of the relays as they happen. So I go into the code subscription parameters that we created in the last demonstration and I have added the backnet objects that are associated with the relays. I also add the two functions that are connected to our HTTP endpoint. And these functions will go through the change of values that we are receiving from the other Dingle device. And we pick the value for each of the relays. These values will be either 1 for on or 0 for off. I have then added two text nodes that will get these values and present them in the dashboard. If we go to the dashboard, we see these two text nodes here, and we see that both relays are off. I will now drag a Bachnet Explorer onto the screen. I will find relay 1 and we see also here that the relay is off. Now let me turn the relay on by setting the value to 1. And we see in the dashboard behind me that relay 1 changes to 1. Let me do the same for relay 2. So we see that the coves are working for the relays. Now let us look at how we write to the relays. I have added two buttons, on and off. The on button will send a simple 1 from it when clicked and the off button will send a 0. I have then added a HTTP request that will receive the values from the buttons. It will use the put method because that is how we change values within the Bachnet web services. It will take the values from the buttons and send to this URL. The URL points to the present value of the Bachnet object that is associated with Relay1. It will use the plain format, that is why we use a simple 1 or 0. And we use the priority level 8 which is called manual operator. I've done the same thing for relay 2, but of course we point the URL to the Bachnet object that is associated with relay 2 instead. Let us go to the dashboard again and see what happens when we click the buttons. We can see that we can switch the relays on and off. Now let us go back to the Bachnet Explorer and try to turn Relay1 off. And we can see that it does not work. The reason for that can be seen when we look at the priority level 
that the BACnet Explorer is using, we see that it is using the lowest priority level or level 16. We were using level 8 or a manual operator. A lower number actually indicates a higher priority. So this means that the only way that the BACnet Explorer can now write to the BACnet property is to use priority level 8 or higher. Another option is for us to relinquish the BACnet property that we have been writing to. I'm going to show next how we relinquish the property. I have created another button called relinquish. The way to relinquish a property is by writing a null value to it. There are two ways to write a null value in the BACnet web services, either by using XML or JSON. I'm using JSON and the payload here shows how that looks like in JSON. We then send the value via a HTTP request using the put method. The URL is a little bit different because we are now using JSON and it is of course important that the priority level is the same as when we were writing to the property. So let us try it out. We press the relinquish buttons and we actually see that Relay1 switches to the value that the BACnet Explorer was trying to set. Let us go into the BACnet Explorer and try to change the values again. And we see that we have successfully relinquished the relay properties from our Node-RED application. So that is it. We have Node-RED running on a Dingo device, reading trend logs, receiving change of values, and writing to BACnet properties on another Dingo device via the BACnet web services. I hope you learned something from this video and goodbye for now.